Hello everyone, welcome to NG Classes YouTube channel for a video lecture series on digital signal processing. In this video, we will consider the concept of bilinear transformation. Basically, bilinear transformation is one of the ways, one of the means to convert an analog filter into a digital filter. So, I repeat the sentence. It is one of the ways to convert an analog filter. So, let me write the same thing. An analog filter to a digital filter. To digital filter. Is, is this okay? So, I said I can convert a given analog filter into a digital filter. The next question is, is that the only way? No, there are many ways. There are many tra such transformations. There is something called uh, backward difference method, impulse invariant technique and uh, matched Z transformation and there is also called as bilinear transformation. So, there are uh, nearly 4 to 5 ways to convert a given analog filter into digital filter. And bilinear transformation is one of the ways. It converts analog to digital. So, how do I get converted uh, from analog to digital? Uh, towards the end, uh, say for example, I can design an analog filter using Butterworth filter or Chebyshev filter. Towards the end, I am going to get a transfer function. Transfer function, it is there in terms of uh, H of S. So, to get into a digital domain, in that S, H of S, I need to replace, I need to substitute every S with uh, this uh, transformation. That is uh, 2 by T into bracket 1 minus Z inverse uh, divided by 1 plus Z inverse. So, if I do this uh, transformation, uh, analog filter is going to get converted into digital filter. So, this is what the bilinear transformation is. The next question is, how do I, uh, I mean, how did I get S equal to, I mean, S uh, need to be substituted with the 2 by T, 1 minus Z inverse divided by 1 plus Z inverse. So, how do, how, how, how did I get into this conclusion? There is a small derivation that we can uh, consider in this uh, uh, video. To derive this transformation, what we do is, I'll consider the derivation. I'll derivative of, uh, say for example, D by uh, DT of Y of T is equal to what? x of t. I consider the input and the output. Our derivative of the output, I'll take it as the input. So, now what I do is I take a Laplace transform. Taking Laplace transform on both the sides. So, what is going to happen? So, let's see that. Taking Laplace transform on both the sides. Uh, d by dt of y of t. That is equal to s into y of s. Which is equal to x of S. So, are you getting it? The Laplace transform of f, x, f, x of t is nothing but x of s and the derivative of y of t is nothing but s into y of s. So, let me write the input thing first so that I'll just rearrange it. I'll write the input term first. x of s is equal to s into y of s. So, I got this. Next, what I do is that to find the output y of t within the limits the limits are within the limits. I want to find the output y of t within the limits n minus 1 t and n into t. So, let these things be two limits where t is the sampling period, uh, where t is nothing but the sampling period. I want to find the output uh, y of t within these uh, limits, that is uh, y minus 1 t and n into t. So, what I do now is, uh, how do I find uh, the limits? I mean, in the sense, I need to find the integrate on both the sides of the above equation with respect to t. Are you getting it? Uh, we'll consider, we'll just call this as equation 1. And whatever uh, we get x of is, this I call it as equation 2. So, now I'll integrate equation 1. Integrate. So, let me write the same thing. Integrate equation 1 uh, with respect to t. So, what, what we are going to get? Integration. The limits will be, I, I said I want to integrate this from uh, n minus 1 t to n into t. So, let me write, put the limits n minus 1 t n into capital T. So, what is there? L later, I have uh, d by dt of y of t which is equal to Again, integration from n minus 1 t to n into t 
here I have uh, x of t uh, dt. Is that okay? Th that is pretty cool. So next, uh, what I have to do is let let let's, let me integrate this. So integration and uh, differentiation, I'm going to cancel. I'm going to get uh, y of t, but I need to put the limits. That is uh, n minus one capital T to n into t. So this limit I need to put. So right hand side, I'll just keep it as it is. N minus one t n into t x of t dt so if i put the limits i'm going to get it as uh, i'm going to get it as y of n into t minus y of n minus 1 t so this is what i'm going to get it now after putting the limits and i said uh, i'm not going to do anything for to the rhs i'll just keep it as it is integration n minus 1 t to n into t x of t dt so the next task is uh, the integral on the right hand side of the above equation so above equation i'll just call it as equation number 3 the right hand side that is the integration n minus 1 t to n into t x of t dt so this can be approximated by a very important trapezoidal rule so let me write that trapezoidal rule basically bilinear transformation makes use of this trapezoidal rule so i need to get the integration so how do i get the integration integration can be uh, found by approximated that to uh, by a trapezoidal rule so what does that rule says it says the rule states if t is small the sampling period if t is small the area or the integral can be approximated by the mean height of x of t between the two limits and then later multiplying by the width are you getting it so i said so let me write the trapezoidal uh, rule with respect to the given thing integration n minus 1 t n into t x of t dt is equal to so i said uh, the integral can be approximated by the mean height of x of t that is mean height of x of t between the limits these two limits so let me write that x of n into t plus x of n minus 1 t divided by 2 is that okay so integral is approximated by the mean height of x of t between the limits and then multiplying by the width what is the width width is uh, capital T so let me write that so this is how uh, this is what the trapezoidal rule says so let me call this as equation number 4 so now i can proceed further and uh, uh, let me try to find uh, the next step so comparing these two equations so equating these two equations therefore i can write so let me write equating equating equation number 3 and equation number 4 so what i'm going to get now in place of uh, integration I'm going to put this so ultimately I would get y of n into t minus y of n minus 1 t so this is equal to now x of n t plus x of n minus 1 into t divided by 2 so this gets multiplied with the width that is t so i have equated these two equations so now as the sampling period t is very small i can write i can write since y uh, since let me consider the input first x of n is approximately equal to x of nt correct and y of n is approximated by y of n into t therefore the above equation may be written as so now in place of every y of n into t i write it as y of t and x of n t i would write it as x of n so if i take that approximation i am going to get y of n minus y of n minus 1 is equal to x of n plus x of n minus 1 divided by 2 
this gets multiplied with capital T correct so now what I do is I take the Z transform is that okay so taking Z transform on both sides taking Z transform on both sides on both sides so what happens if I take the Z transform I'm Y of n gets transformed to Y of Z correct then y of n minus 1 this gets into z inverse y of z so how do I get that this is uh, this is by time shifting property of uh, z transform to write this one must know the time shifting property of z transform so even if you don't know uh, just try to understand y of n minus 1 can be written as z inverse into y of z so yes moving on further so now here I have uh, x of n that gets transformed to x of z and again I have x of n minus 1 so now I'm going to get z inverse x of z so this gets divided by 2 and gets multiplied with t so these things will remain as they are so next in this expression I can take y of z out so let me take uh, y of z out I'm going to be left with 1 minus z inverse this is equal to here also I can take uh, x of z out I'll be left with 1 plus z inverse divided by 2 and I'm left with t into x of z correct so now just try to rearrange this one more time uh, try to write the expression for x of z equal to x of z is equal to what I'm going to get now so take 2 uh, to the LHS and this gets divided by t so here I have uh, 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse and this gets multiplied with y of z is that okay so now I've called this as equation number 5 is that correct yes equation number 5 so now what I can do is I can compare equations uh, 5 and the very first one here it is uh, second one x of s equal to s into y of s so comparing equation 2 and equation 5 so let me write equation 2 again this was x of s is equal to s into y of s so this was equation 2 so now I can compare it very easily so now I'm moving from s domain to z domain from analog domain to a digital domain is that okay so therefore x of n can be compared with x of z y of s can be compared with y of z and what must be s s, s must be replaced or substituted with the 2 by t into 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse so therefore finally i can write therefore s is equal to 2 by t into bracket 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse so this is how I get the substitution factor s equal to uh, this value so the finally this is how we have derived and we just have to remember what is s equal to so once we know I can solve any numerical on uh, uh, bilinear transformation the questions might be uh, they may give one simple transfer uh, function and uh, it can be asked to find the digital filter so how do I find the digital filter so replace every s with uh, 2 by t into bracket 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse so that I am going to get transformed from analog to digital uh, filter. Is that okay? So now this is how the substitution is. And next also what about with the other part remaining part it is not just uh, the over of uh, the derivation. So there are uh, some other factors. Uh, the left half planes, right half planes uh, th that were there in uh, S domain, what happened to them in Z domain? So that also we need to consider. That will sh we shall see it in the next video. Till then, thank you everyone for watching and uh, keep watching the videos from NG Classes YouTube channel on digital signal processing. And meanwhile, subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thank you everyone for patient listening.